my name is Simber and I'm a Guaipo in Hong Kong. And welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I've recorded anything due to my traveling and other adventures that I've been dealing with. So, but now I'm back and, and in this video I'll be reflecting my Europe trip. And specifically for this video, this is going to be solely on Russia. And during this video, I'll be giving you travel tips, the do's and don'ts, and also showing you the amazing things that we were able to see because of Michael's careful planning and thoughtful processes. So this video is not sponsored whatsoever. Um, this is solely based on our experience and Michael's careful planning and his research. So without further ado. So the first thing that I must suggest before you plan any trip that requires air travel is I highly suggest you use the app and or the website Momondo. Momondo is like any other travel app, but it gives you the best deals, but it's but they're even better. I've never seen flights this cheap so until Michael and I discovered this app. So this is why we we're able to go on so many trips and able to fly for a reasonable price. Um, from this trip, we were using the multi-city flight option. We were originally planning on Greece, Italy, France, and the UK, but Momondo gave us a long layover in Moscow. And this made us want to, to go out and look around and just see what was out there. And we are also wondering if maybe there was any possibilities that we could add more cities and or countries. So we had a flight from Hong Kong to Novosibirsk International Airport in Russia where we had a four hour labor. And then after the labor we flew to Moscow and had a seven hour labor. And then after the seven hour layer, we flew from Moscow to Santorini with three hour layover in Athens. And then we flew back to Athens that same day from Santorini where we had another long layover for Rome. From there, we took various trains from Italy and Switzerland. And we don't have another flight until Geneva, Switzerland and to Berlin, Germany. And then from there, we take a bus from Berlin to Amsterdam, and then basically until the rest of the trip, we've been solely been taking trains. And then, of course, on our way back, we took a flight from the UK to Hong Kong. Let's talk about Russia. This was the first spot on our destination, and let me start by saying this, okay. So the European SIM card doesn't work for Russia. So you will need a separate SIM card. If you order a SIM card online, I highly suggest, I cannot recommend this enough, you need to order this months in advance. And listen to this emphasis, months in advance. I mean, if you want it before your trip, of course. We ordered this like two months in advance and it got here while we were gone on this trip. Learn from our experience. Hopefully you can do better. Another thing that I should mention, on our flight from Hong Kong to Russia, a lot of the flight attendants thought I was Russian. I guess maybe because I look one, like one of them. I mean, I do have Polish on my mom's side, so I guess I look kind of Slavic, but I mean, I just never thought I would look like one of them. So it was just kind of funny having people on the airline just start speaking Russian to me like I was one of them. I just I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Another thing that I'd also like to mention is that while we were in Novosibirsk, hardly anyone speaks English. The only people that could speak a little English were the people working customs, the flight attendants, and that was basically it. But we were able to order our um, pierogies and the pierogies and their version of borscht. How? Well, we did a lot of pointing. Lots of pointing. Also, thanks to the Wi-Fi from the airport businesses, we were able to translate some of the items on the menu. Another side note, the airport in Russia does have Wi-Fi, but it does not work unless you have a Russian phone number. So, 
We weren't able to use the Russian airport Wi-Fi because we didn't have a Russian phone number. And why was that? Again, because we did not have our SIM card before the trip. Thank you so much, Russian Post, for your speedy and timely delivery. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're so blessed. So anyways, so in this perspective, as far as like English, or not just English, but Russian language, is it good to know a little Russian before the trip? I think so, just for this part. I mean, I think it's good to know like a little Russian. And I would also like to point out that we were, th because this is our first place, we didn't have to go through customs in Moscow, so it kind of saved us some time. When we were or at Novosibirsk, the customs was extremely slow. We waited for like an hour before we got cleared, and we weren't even at the back of the line. They don't have much electronic customs equipment because they're still using like the stamps and you know that's not a bad thing because I like to have my passport stamped so it's fine but they're also using like magnifying glass to see how legit your passport is and another note I would like to make is to allow like at least two hours to clear immigration at the first instance of touching down on Russian soil. In our case we had a transfer from Novosibirsk to Moscow and so we didn't have to deal with immigration again. So, and the reason why is because they treated it as a domestic flight from Novosibirsk to Moscow. Now, for Moscow, it was a little better as far as language barriers, but it was a little bit of a struggle still. If you plan on leaving the airport in Moscow, you will need to purchase the airport express train ticket before the trip, you know, in case, you know, your SIM card doesn't arrive before the trip. Michael read up that the taxis there aren't really that reliable and plus there's a huge language barrier and they also tend to scam a lot of foreigners. We try to avoid the taxi as much as possible. The Aero Express train arrives every 30 minutes so getting the ticket is a process itself. Also, if your plane lets you off before a train is supposed to leave, just take the next train. You won't make it due to people traffic and the distance and ticket scannings for the train. But also don't waste that next half hour to get to the other side either because it's only about like a 10-15 minute walk to exit 3. Try not to waste that much time. And before you reach to exit 3, uh, there is an Aero Express information counter where you can purchase tickets and after you go to exit 3 you will step outside and to the left side there is a tiny tin shaft and walking through this you will see the turnstiles to the Aero Express train. Here they have two automated machines where you can buy tickets there as well. Hopefully, you know, you're able to get the ticket beforehand. After you get on the Airport Express train, you can take it to Pavletsky Terminal and this is where you will switch to the metro by going inside the building. And during the evening, the crowd will go through the like Pavletsky like metro mall area. So I mean when you're inside you'll go through the security then turn left and if anything look for like the overhead sign that reads Metpo. Here you will need to purchase a separate metro card with cash. And the round trip costs about 110 Russian rubles and the automated ticket dispenser is on the right side before you go. Reasonable bill. The machine will give you change, but you will need to give it reasonable bills, which is like in the hundreds, not in the thousands. And another positive note is that the screens do offer it in English. Okay, so um, this is what the Metro card looks like. You'll get one of these when you purchase them. Don't lose it because you will need this. So yeah, just don't lose it. You won't need it once you're back onto the Aero Express, but when you're trying to see the place, don't lose this. And I think this is good for the day, right? No, for, for two trips. Oh, sorry, for two trips. So after you go through those doors, you'll go through another set of turnstiles where you will scan your card and you'll go down these long escalators. You will take the train going towards Teatralnea. Look at the Russian characters for this in case it doesn't have the English. And then you'll take this train for two stops and then you'll then transfer to Akotny, Ryan Station. And then you'll follow the painted signs with red in the background and white on the characters that has the number one. And then from here you will go through this long tunnel followed by a set of escalators on the right.
at that station's platform. Keep climbing up to take your exits 5 through 7. There is a left 5 through 7 and a right 5 through 7. A and B, if you will. The one door directly to your right after you're out the doors, um, those are the same doors that are open late. The doors on the left close early. If one set is closed, just try another. The doors shouldn't close to the metro until 1 a.m., which is like closing time for the metro. Also, side note, you might need to know the Russian characters for the exits. During the daytime, though, you should be fine because I feel like there's going to be a lot more tourists and people going out during the day. So just a mental note for that as well. Once you're past Okhotny Raya Station, if I'm butchering the pronunciation, please let me know. I tried finding the pronunciations online and I couldn't really find any reliable sources. So just let me know and I'll try to correct it in the future. Anyways, you will go into the next set of tunnels. No matter what exit you take, you will see Red Square. But if you keep walking to the end of the tunnel, you would have an exit in front of the Red Square with the Four Seasons behind you. Hi guys, so we are at Red Square and it looks like there's a gate, but it's open. stairs directly to your left straight after the mall four seasons will be to your left with red square in the front so this is red square Exits 1 through 4 is on the opposite side of the 8 lanes of traffic, which you won't be able to cross. It's good to just take the underground pass. But there is a really delicious restaurant called Dr. Jibako. I think that's how you say it. It's at exit one. It's like your typical continental style restaurant that serves like top-notch Russian food for a really decent price. This restaurant is definitely has emphasis on sitting down and talking, having a good time while you enjoy your food. We waited about approximately 40 minutes for our food. Because of this, I suggest that you allow at least two and a half hours for this restaurant. I also suggest ordering appetizers and a bottle of wine if waiting 40 minutes for your food isn't your cup of tea. So regardless of the wait time, the food was worth the wait. It was delicious. It made us want to have another or trip to allow us more time to enjoy the restaurant. It just had a great atmosphere and it was a nice restaurant and I wish we had more time to sit down and actually enjoy it. I should also mention that the last train for the Aero Express leaves at 18 minutes after midnight. So therefore I suggest you make it, you make time for your, like the pictures, the restaurants and the travel time back to the airport wisely. And final note, if you're going towards Moscow, the voice on the intercom is male. If you're going away from Moscow, you will hear a female voice. This is to ensure that you are going in the right direction on the trains. So that's it for Moscow and I hope you enjoy this video and please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!
нас снова разделяют нас города, дороги и огни. Снова не могу без тебя, снова в голове надежда одна, но скоро встретимся мы. Сложно быть с тобой, это факт, по-другому быть не может никак, смирился с этим я. Задаю вопрос, как же так, поднимаю над собой белый флаг, победа снова твоя. Понимаю, что скажу я с ума, зачем нам эта игра?